<clears throat> Luke chapter 17. We're going through these important questions from Scripture. And we have looked at uh, seven in very important questions from Scripture. And um, tonight is a very, very practical study uh, where Jesus asked the question, And where are the nine? And where are the nine? Look in uh, chapter 17, verse number 11. Very familiar story to all of us. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Of course, uh, Dr. Luke is uh, speaking of Jesus. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Now listen to this. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. As I was studying this afternoon, I read a parable or a story about a man who found a barn where Satan kept his seeds ready to be sown in the human heart. There were seeds of discontent. There were seeds of anxiety. There were seeds of hatred and anger and bitterness. Seeds of regret and prejudice and discouragement. These seen, seeds could be sown almost anywhere. When Satan was questioned, he admitted that the seeds of discouragement were favorites of his among all the seeds. However, he made this statement. He said there was only one place where they could not sprout and grow. He said they cannot be sown in the heart of a grateful person. Uh, Luke chapter 17. In Luke 17, we find a story that deals with the absence of appreciation. The Bible says Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, he encounters a group of ten men, and all of these men were suffering from the dreaded disease of leprosy. And in response to their cries, Jesus miraculously cleanses them of their condition. This story, though, ends on a, a perplexing note, if not a sad note, as only one of the ten returns to give his thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for what Jesus had done in his life. When the Lord sees the lone worshiper returning, he asks this question, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? A story is told, you may have heard it, of a man who was lost in the woods. And later in describing the experience, he told how frightened he was and how he had even got to the point where he knelt down and he began to pray. And somebody said to the man, they said, well, did God answer your prayer? And the man said, oh, no. Before God had a chance, a guide came along and showed me the way out. Now listen, that, that how, that's how many people are blind to the many blessings that God daily showers upon us. As we study the healing of these ten lepers, we are challenged to be one of those who remember to give God thanks and praise for what He has done in our lives. You know, if we're not careful, too often we focus on the gift and we leave out the giver. We focus on what He has done for us and we leave out who it is that did it, did it for us. We are quick on prayer and then after that prayer is answered, we are slow on praise. So this whole story revolves around grace and our response to that grace. Three quick things. If you're taking notes, I want you to write these down. Number one, essential grace is evidenced in the petition of the ten. Essential grace is evidenced in the petition of the ten. Jesus, as our story says, he's passing through Samaria. And as he entered into a certain village, ten lepers standing afar off, they began to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the greatest need of these lepers was the need for grace. 
I mean, it was their deepest need. It was a, a deep need. It was a desperate need. I mean, nothing else was going to help them. Why? Because, first of all, they were in a condition of defilement. They were in a condition of defilement. Verse 12 tells us that these men were lepers. Now, you know as well as I do, you've heard this, you've been taught this in Sunday school. In the Bible, there was no disease regarded with more terror and more fear than leprosy. So these ten men had a deteriorating, a dreadful, and a defiling disease. So the Bible says in verse 12 that these lepers met Jesus, but they stood afar off. By law, by law, lepers were required to keep a safe distance from other people. Plus, when anybody came near or they came near the leper or the lepers came near them, they were required to cry out, unclean, unclean, to warn others that he was a leper. A leper also lived in isolation. There was a, a, a concentration camp, if you will, a place that was concentrated where all lepers were isolated. Now, according to Josephus, lepers were treated as if they were, in effect, dead men. They were horribly despised and shunned in Christ's day. I don't have time to get into it, but, but leprosy is a picture of sin and how sin defiles us. How sin deteriorates our lives. So they were in a condition of defilement, but notice what they did. They cried out in desperation. Verse 13 says, And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, Master, have mercy on us. These ten lepers were in a helpless and hopeless condition. Their only hope, their only hope was the Son of God. Leprosy was eating away at their body every single day. So they knew that Jesus passing by, they knew that this was probably their only hope. It was their only chance. They had no way out of their dilemma. There were no cures for leprosy. There were no solutions for leprosy. Their faith may be small, but listen to me, they were desperate men. Desperate men. They had no other option, so they cried out, Have mercy on us. It's a phrase that recognizes that one is in a pitiful condition. Now, you and I have read, or, or I've read, that the voice of a person with leprosy, as time goes on, it becomes very weak by the, uh, weakened by the disease. Uh, many who have studied this disease believe that leprosy often resulted in a total failure of vocal ability. As a result, it required great effort on the part of these lepers to even cry out, to the Lord Jesus Christ. But cry out, they did. But notice, notice also in this story, they were cleansed by deity. They were cleansed by deity. In verse 14 we read, And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, under Mosaic law, uh, it would have been quite silly for a leper to even approach the priest as long as he remained a leper. Uh, to present yourself as the continuing victim of the dreaded disease of leprosy would, ha would have elicited fierce condemnation, not only from the priest, but from everybody around. Even the priests were capable of becoming lepers, so they didn't want lepers in, in their midst. They didn't want to see a leper. Only when a man had reason to believe his leprosy had been healed had he any grounds upon which to ask for a ceremonial pronouncement that he was fit to go back and live with his family and to be around his friends. Now, Christ told these men to report to the priest while they were yet lepers. Now, don't you think Jesus knew the Mosaic law? Jesus knew as lepers they couldn't go unto the priest. The priest wouldn't even see them. But yet he tells them to go and face the priest. So these ten men, they're faced with a dilemma. Reason would say, Jesus, it is useless to do as you suggest. Jesus, it's useless to do as you command us because the priest is not going to see us. So reason says that. But faith says... Since Jesus commanded us to, he surely has a reason for issuing the command, so we will go in simple dependence upon his word. Friend, that's what faith says, amen? Now notice what the Bible says. The Bible says as they went, they were cleansed. That is, they were healed of their leprosy as they went 
to see the priest. They took Jesus at his word, and because they took Jesus at his word, before they ever got to the priest, they had been cleansed of leprosy. They were asked to believe that Christ would do something for them. You know what? We're asked to believe that Christ has already done something for us. Amen? All right, there's a second thing I want you to see. Essential grace was seen in the first part of this story. Uh, we saw the petition of the lepers. But there's worshiping grace also in this story. Worshiping grace is seen in the praise of the one. Worshiping grace is seen in the praise of the one. Look at verse 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Now you can only imagine how excited these ten lepers must have been when all of a sudden they were cleansed and they were healed. Their skin became just like baby skin. I mean, just in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we would say, they were totally and completely cleansed. So, but only one turns back. Think, think about all the implications of now being able to go back to your family. You're able to get out of isolation. You can go back and hang out with your friends. But listen, there was one of these lepers that saw much more than that. One returns to declare and to express his gratitude for what the grace of God had done in his life. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says he glorified God. It's, it's twice it's mentioned that the man glorified God. To glorify God is to exalt his attributes as well as his actions. He is God. That's his attribute. And he can do anything he wants to. That's his action. Amen? While ten men petitioned only one man came back and praised. Now look at this. His praise was a praise that was powerful. The Bible says with a loud voice he glorified God. One leper praised God audibly. The Bible says he literally glorified God. That's just another way of saying that he was praising the Lord. Hmm. He looked at what God had done for him and he just begins to praise God. The Lord. His praise was more than just something he felt on the inside. No, his praise was articulated. It was audible. What he felt was expressed in words. Now, don't you know everybody around him knew that something had happened to him? It is certain that everyone heard him praising God audibly and everyone saw him praising God visibly. Others may have been embarrassed by his exuberance, but you know what? He didn't care. You know what I found? I found that when somebody comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they really don't care what people think about them. If they truly got Jesus, man, they want everybody to know. Amen? Jesus had healed him, and he was going to make it known. So this leper's glad praise should be that of every person whose heart has been healed by Jesus' mighty power. The witness he exclaimed with a loud voice, the worship he exemplified. The Bible says he fell down on his face. So it was a powerful praise. But notice also he gave a proclamation that was proper. A proclamation that was proper. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Psalm 107, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Psalm 29 and verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Psalm 96 verse 8, same thing. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. 2 Samuel 22 4 and Psalm 18 verse 3 state that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen? But there's a last thing that I want you to write down. I want you to write this down. There's the ungratefulness of grace as seen in the nine. There is the ungratefulness of grace that is seen in the nine. Notice what Christ says. Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? The little boy was asked to define salt and he responded, salt is what makes potatoes taste bad when it's left out. Hmm. So it is with gratitude. So it is with gratitude. Here's an interesting yet tragic question from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a question that Jesus should never have to ask of his children. Jesus had healed ten of the lepers. 
But only one of the ten comes back and personally thanks God for what he had done. What is it that we see in the actions and absence of the nine lepers? A uh, family was going out to lunch one day and they ordered dessert. And uh, the waiter brought pie and ice cream and the little boy said, thank you. And that waitress said, you know what, I love to hear thank you. And the little boy looked at her and said, will you give me another scoop of ice cream and you'll hear it again. <laughs> Now listen, we shouldn't wait for the extra scoop to give thanks. The nine, where are they? Christ, with seeming sadness and surprise, he inquires where they are. Jesus was seeking thanksgivers, and he found only this one, one out of ten. Our Lord's question addresses a weakness common to us all, and that weakness is that ingratitude comes in our lives many times when it shouldn't. How easy is it for us to take the blessings of God for granted? A pastor in Mississippi went to see a, a family that had visited his church the previous Sunday, and he took his daughter with him on the visit. And as they visited with the family, the man in the house gave the preacher's girl a handful of peanuts. And the girl eagerly uh, took them, and she began to pop those peanuts in her mouth. And trying to teach his daughter good manners, the preacher said, Honey, aren't you forgetting something? What are you supposed to say? The little girl thought about it for a moment, and she said, can I have some more? Hmm. Now here in our story, as we close, here we see hearts that were thoughtless. Hearts that were thoughtless. They got so caught up in the gift, as we said a moment ago, that they totally forgot the giver. How easy is it for us to forget what God has done for us? It is so easy when a person has been saved for some time to lose sight of what they used to be and how God saved them and how God changed their life. Sometimes we get over that. Sometimes we look over it. Psalm 103 and verse 2, the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. May we never forget that we are what we are, we are who we are, we are where we are, all because of the amazing grace of God. But here also were hearts that were thankless. Not only thoughtless, they were thankless. All ten were healed, but only one came back to give thanks. The nine were healed, but failed to express their gratitude to Jesus. When we talk about them being thoughtless and thankless, think, think with me about this. If we would think more, we would thank more. Amen? Folks who aren't thankful, they just don't think too much. I read today about a fellow who wanted to sell his home. And so he called his real estate agent and he said, you know what, I want to run an ad in the newspaper to sell my house. I want you to get rid of it as quickly as you can. I, I'm tired of this old place. The agent said, well, tell me something about your home so I can run a good ad. And so the man just began to go on and on how many rooms it had, carpet, all that stuff, expensive shrubs in the yard, great-looking lawn. He told about fruit trees that he had in the backyard, and, and he just went on and on telling about the accessories of the house. He described the house in detail. And so when he finished, the agent said, well, I'm going to read it back to you, and you tell me how it sounds. And so the real estate agent read the ad, and he, he read about the beautiful three-bedroom home, two baths, a good stand of, of carpet, a good, good stand of grass, fruit trees in the backyard. There was a new tin roof, central air conditioning and heating, a recently remodeled carport for two cars. And he kept on and on until finally the owner stopped him. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, that house is not for sale. All my life, I've wanted a place like that. I just didn't realize I had it until now. Now listen, thinking produces thankfulness. You can't count your blessings until your eyes are open to all the little things you enjoy every day. And don't you think it's the little things that we overlook? I mean, it's the, little, the things that we take for granted. I, I, you know what? When I woke up this morning, I didn't thank God that I could brush my teeth. But you know what? That's a blessing. It's a blessing for you so my breath don't smell. <laughs> but think about all the things that we do every day that we don't give conscious thought of. I mean, it's just routine. And God has so richly blessed us. Ingratitude and the absence of appreciation reveal that we have forgotten what God has done for us. The very fact that Jesus asked about the nine reveals that it concerns the heart of God when we fail 
to give thanks when we're ungrateful. All of us that are saved, we're like the ten. The question before us is we like, are we like the one or are we like the nine? I want to be like the one, amen? I, I tell us all, or all the time, we had not said it in a while, but I, but I believe that God will bless a church that loves Jesus, that is thankful, and that commits to kindness. So let's make sure we're living that out every day. Love Jesus, be thankful, and commit to kindness. Father, we love you. And Lord, we just want to say to you tonight, thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for saving me. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for a beautiful family. I want to thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for a tremendous, tremendous church. Never in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined that you would allow us to be pastoring people. Lord, I thank you so much for it. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the little things that we take for granted so often. Lord Jesus, just the ability to see and to hear and to walk. Lord Jesus, may we never get over that. Lord, the moment, the moment that uh, you don't want us to have those abilities anymore, Lord, they'll be gone. Lord Jesus, so while we have them, Lord, we say thank you for them. We thank you for this beautiful worship center. We thank you for the beautiful buildings you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the gospel message that goes forth from this church week by week. Lord, may we continue to lift you up and trumpet you. Tell this world that Jesus saves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, now don't forget, make sure that uh, you reach out to your Sunday school. Been down the last couple of weeks, so let's make sure we reach out to our Sunday school. Have them, everybody back this Sunday for our early worship at 845, Sunday school at 10. Work hard on Sunday school, and then uh, worship at 11 and 6 p.m. Sunday. Thank you, and God bless you.